Hi, my name is Rebecca Domarev and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Tilka Organic Tea. Tilka is Australia's most awarded organic tea brand. I am a mother of three beautiful boys, including one with special needs. And through our journey, I've learned how to manage business and being a mum of a child with special needs through COVID and managed to come out the other end with a business in whole and a big smile through my time in the morning as I sit over my cup of tea. This is my story. Welcome to the Fair Business Australia podcast. Future-proof your business, impact your community. I'm your host, Rebecca Lloyd. Welcome, Fair Business Australians, to another episode of the Fair Business Australia podcast. I met Rebecca, yes, her name is the same as me, a few uh, months ago at a networking event, and she told me her story. I thought it was absolutely fabulous. I asked her to come on the show today a little bit about Rebecca. She is the founder CEO of Tilka Tea Brand, Australia's most awarded organic tea. Now, that's pretty high. Uh, She's had 49 awards and 24 of those are actually for her tea bags, but she is a happily married mother of three and a flourishing business owner. Can you have it all? I'm here to say, yes, you absolutely can. Rebecca, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on and being my guest today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you and to talk about your tea brand. It's absolutely wonderful to be here and I look forward to chatting with you. So we're talking about can you have it all, a business and a family, because the world loves to tell you that you can, but then we hear stories of breakdown and I couldn't do this and imposter syndrome and all that kind of stuff, which, by the way, is part of a small business journey, just so you know if you haven't embarked on it yet. But who is Rebecca when she is a tea person? We'll talk about that first and then we'll go into your family line. So tell us a little bit about Tilka brand. Where did the idea come from? What is Tilka? What kind of teas do you have? And then we'll talk about you as a business owner. Sure. So Tilka is all about beautiful organic tea. I actually discovered tea back in 2002 when I was in Poland and I visited this beautiful little cafe with my then fiance. And we went into a cafe and I was not particularly interested in tea. Coffee didn't interest me. Everyone had coffee. That was boring. But they presented me with this beautiful tea menu. And I looked through the pages and pages of beautiful teas and I was I was shocked, to be honest. I was expecting, you know, your Lipton or something like that. I never knew tea could be treated with such dignity. And I ordered tea and I was hooked instantly. They served it in the most gorgeous teapot and little infuser with a beautiful cup. And I could not stop drinking tea. And I was absolutely captured by tea. And when I wanted to start my own business in 2009, this idea of tea came up and I knew that Australia just didn't do tea the way it deserved, the way it deserved to be treated. And so this fascination of tea and interest in tea and research of tea grew from that. And we discovered the most beautiful teas and and showed them, shared with, with people. And people looked at them and they said, I can't believe this is tea. This looks like art. And that's what kicked it off. Wow. Artistic tea. I love that. So why did you um, wait seven years before you started your own business? You were obviously an employee before that because uh, you were a fiancé, so I'm assuming that you had no children up to that point. That's right. Well, actually, I was studying a Bachelor of Music, which has nothing to do with tea. (laughs) (laughs) And I uh, founded a a small academy of creative arts at a local school. And so that's what I was doing in in the meantime. Um, But something just caught my vision about tea in the meantime, and I started to do research. And it it just really captured my heart and a, a desire to pursue that further. Wow. Wow. And so you've been in business since 2009 Mm -hmm. and you obviously got married to your then fiancé and you have three children. How old are your kids? So our oldest, Peter, he's 17 and then Paul's 12 and then Andrew is almost six. Almost six. Now there is a story around Andrew and it actually ties in very intrinsically with your Tilka brand. So so how was Tilka moving up until Andrew's birth? Well, up until he was born, it was all about the tea. 
it was about beautiful product, uh, creating just that beautiful brew and what varieties we had. And, and that was all. Uh, when Andrew was born, that actually completely changed the direction of the business. And Andrew, he was born in 2018. And right away after he was born, we sensed that something wasn't quite right. And within a couple of hours, the doctors came and talked to us and they said, look, we think your son has Down syndrome. And that really threw through us, it it was just something that came out of nowhere, and and they said we need to take him down to Brisbane for uh, surgery. And on day three of his life, they operated on him just to fix some things that that needed to be uh, to be done. And we actually had to move to Brisbane for a month wow. in that first year of his life. And I discovered something that was quite unexpected and that I had this this strength and this peace that I didn't know I had and until that time I had been drinking my tea every morning and I'd had that special time just that time for me alone with my cup of tea my music my own space and I looked back on the months and years before that and I realised this space that I had created at the start of my day had created a reservoir of strength mm. and energy to get me through this difficult time. And, and, yeah, of course, it was hard. You know, there were tears. Of course there were tears. But I was quite shocked that I was able to think clearly and move through this and process what was going on in a really positive way. Mm. And I realised that it was so much more than tea that was giving me strength. It was this time and this place to, to create this, this energy that I didn't know I had. And I realised that Tilka had to share that message further. I had to share that with other people because this was important. This was life-changing. And I remember the, the weeks after we got home from the hospital with Andrew, a friend sat down with me and, and she looked at me and she said, look, what are you going to do about Tilka now? And to be honest, I was taken aback because when she said that, all I heard was everything that you've worked for, all your dreams, all your hopes for Tilka, you may as well just put that aside because your life is now going to be all about appointments and Andrew's disability. And in that moment, I have to admit, this, this inner fury erupted. <laughs> and I said to myself, actually, no, that's not, his go that's not what's going to happen with us. In fact, not only are we going to be okay, but Tilka and our family life, we're actually going to be better off for having Andrew. Wow. And that really just lit something in me. And later on that year, uh, we entered Tilka's the teas into the uh, Golden Leaf Awards for the first time, and we came away with I can't remember. It was something like ten awards. We walked away wow. with the first year, and eight of them were gold, and two were silver. <laughs> and and I was like, yeah, this is it. <laughs> we can do this. This isn't all about Andrew and his needs now absolutely we can manage this forward we can uh support family we can support business and bring everything that it should be through the business so that was just a, an incredible affirmation and then the year after we got some more awards and the following year and the year after so wow that's just been a beautiful thing that's come out of that wow wow thank you for sharing so transparently i um it sounds like such an absolute journey that you've done beautifully emotionally, but what did it look like for you uh, from, from a practical point of view? You, you have this child that needs a lot of attention. You have all the extracurricular activities that are now part of your life, which weren't part of your life before. So you've, you've balanced the emotional side of things from that reservoir that you'd already uh, cultivated over a number of years. How did you manage the practicalities and uh, do a business on top of that. <laughs> sure. That, that took a bit of time to put in place just on a very practical level. And one of the things I realised was I couldn't do everything by myself. Mm. 
And that was a huge thing. Uh, it can be very easy to become quite controlling when you have this new situation and a lot of unknowns and you want to just take care of everything. And I realised instantly I couldn't do that. That just wasn't an option. So we tapped into all the support that we could get. Uh, thankfully, here in Australia, we have wonderful NDIS, which is a, a program to provide funding for therapy. And we accessed therapy assistance for Andrew that would spend uh, quite a bit of time just one-on-one -on -one with Andrew doing the therapy, implementing the speech and the physio and the OT programs that I knew that I couldn't do by myself. Mm. And when Andrew was with the therapist, I would spend time on the business. <laughs> And uh, we also uh, took him to our local daycare and I had to say, okay, Andrew needs to be included and we're going to involve other people. We're going to involve the educators and get them on board with Andrew's needs and his program. And they were amazing. They were fantastic. So he would go to the local daycare and he would spend time with other children and, of course, that would give me time to, to work on the business. Uh, there were some realistic expectations that I had to manage. I knew that I couldn't be working 50, 60 hour weeks and I had to expect that, yes, the business may not progress as fast as if I had all that extra time. And so that was something that I just had to realise, okay, this is going to take a little bit more time than mm. perhaps it would otherwise. And, and what did that look like for you as an A-type personality, having to let go of control of your child? Because I know we've spoken about this. We are both A-types and we connected immediately on, on that uh, deficit slash strength that we both share. What did that look like for you, letting go of control of your child and involving other people? Because often in those highly traumatic uh, charge situations, you can want to grab everything. So you've allowed community in there, but also as someone who was just having her tea and drinking it too up until that point, how were you able to uh, manage your own expectations around the business? Mm, sure. Well, the interesting thing about my A-type personality is that I also have quite a opposite aspect as well, which is someone who's able to relinquish control. Right. Uh, so that worked in my favour in that regard. So I was able to rationalise that and think logically, okay, I can control everything and my business will suffer or I can let it go and things will be much more positive for, for myself and for the business and for Andrew. So it was a logical uh, decision to make and also mm. supported by this other aspect of my personality type. <laughs> mm. Mm. And does letting in community also uh, include your husband? Um, what, what did that look like for your relationship? And the reason I ask that question, folks, is I'm not trying to pry. What I'm saying is, is that um, business alone can be highly stressful uh, on, on relationships. Add in the mix a special needs child. And for those of us who are in long-term stable relationships, that period of time can get very, very rocky. What uh, what did that look like for you as a couple juggling business and special needs and, you know, moving through COVID as well a few years after he'd come along as well? What did that look like for you as a family? It sounds like the perfect storm. <laughs> it certainly was and, and it wasn't perfect. Like I'll be really honest with you. Uh, we have this interesting dynamic with my husband. He He's from Russia. And he grew up there and moved here when he was uh, 24, when, after we got married. And in Russia, the culture is very different, very different attitude towards children with disabilities, and they institutionalise their children. Uh, and that's, that's quite heartbreaking. And for my husband, this idea that this was his life, that took some processing. Mm. And... It, it wasn't easy and, and it still has its challenges because that's something that we have to process regularly as a couple. Uh, but one thing that we are able to do, I guess, as a couple is I allow Alexi to take care of his what is going on in his world and I trust him to do that and he does the same for me. 
Uh, and I think that's important because as soon as you start getting on the other person's page, you should be doing this, you should be this kind of person, uh, that's when the tension happens. Mm. And, you know, we didn't do that perfectly, but it is one of the stronger aspects, I suppose. And I just had to say I can't control what is going on in Alexi's heart right now. I have to trust that he can take care of that and I have to take care of what's going on in my heart. Mm. And, and that that was, I think that was probably one of the things that really did support us through that. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. So the business, now many of our businesses, as we all know, really took a beating in uh, the COVID pandemic. And your business, on the other hand, uh, even with your personal situation has absolutely flourished mm. over the last, is it six years? So was there something that you practically did? Like how do you attribute so much success, so many awards, so many from our previous conversations, really, really high-flying clients coming in? Uh, what, what do you attribute that to? Well, COVID was actually a little bit of a godsend for us, to be honest, and and I know that we are the exception to the rule in this case. So I do say that just in recognition that a lot of businesses really did suffer. Mm. Uh, for us, we had a model that wasn't really scalable, to be honest. We were supplying wholesale tea to cafes, retailers, and it wasn't growing as quickly as what we liked. Mm. And it, it wasn't actually ticking a lot of uh, boxes for me personally in terms of how I expressed myself through the business. Uh, when COVID happened, the you know, all the cafe shut down and our income just went flat. And we were forced to look at a different model, which was the e-commerce model. So we spent that time when everything was in lockdown, just uh, building our e-com site, our backlinks, SEO. We just focused on creating um, engaging content with our customers, uh, social media. And that was actually something that that lit something in me personally because I really love connecting with people. I love to tell them the message. I love to, to share my heart with them. And this was a real opportunity to do that, which I didn't have so much with the cafes and the wholesale model. So, and I think that really came through with the, the website and the our emails and so on, and people really responded to that. And when people are online and they can engage with your brand and see who you are and what you do and read about it, it's much more effective than staying in a, in a store setting where you've got 10 different tea brands and it's much more difficult to communicate that. So for us, that was just a real amazing, actually, that pivot to do that and to focus on the e -com. And we've been building on that ever since. So that's just been fantastic for us. Mm, so good. Now, I'm going to ask Rebecca to show her tea to you in a moment. Now, the tea is entirely photoshopped and absolutely beautiful and absolutely perfect. Uh, she gave me some tea as a sample at the networking event that we both went to and it was absolutely wonderful. I was staying overnight in the hotel and instead of having the hotel tea, I had, uh, I think it's the rose tea, I think it was. It was absolutely exquisite. So the tea itself is exquisite and yet, Rebecca has this wonderful way of being so transparent and not photoshopped and not absolutely perfect. So I, I find that really fascinating that whilst the product can have this whole sphere of excellence about it, people don't want um, excellence and photoshopped from other people. They want the auth authenticity. They want the hero's journey. They want the everything was going well and then things went to pot and then I did this and then I did that and now we're here. So how much of your personal story do you actually get to share with what I understand is your growing audience? Oh, I share as much as I can, as much as is appropriate. So uh, I love to share my heart. I love to get vulnerable. I love to tell people the nitty gritty of the, the challenges and the difficulties. So any opportunity that I can do that and, and just make that connection, I love to do that, especially with the, the newsletters and the blogs. That's really where my heart is in the writing aspect. Mm, so good. Well, I think it's high time that we had a look at the tea, which is Tilka tea. Uh, tell us about your teas, Rebecca. What what flavours do you have? What's the best selling? Uh, let's unpack that a little bit. Sure. So we have uh, a range of black teas, green teas. 
uh, white oolong teas and also some herbal infusions, which aren't tea, of course, but we enjoy them like tea. Uh, my personal favourite, I have a couple, is one of them is the Earl Royale. Uh, I can just show you one of these cute little tea bags here. So the Earl Royale is a handcrafted black tea with natural Italian bergamot oil. So I actually apply the bergamot oil myself. It's not a little flavour. That It's the real thing. It's the real deal. And, and you can tell when you try it. I love to show you the packaging. This is uh, really cute. So this is our tins and this is our Tilka breakfast which is, this is by far our best seller. So if you like a really just beautiful black tea, this is the one that you need to get. And I love reading the reviews there. They give me a bit of entertainment here. So here's one from Jason. He says, I'm addicted to Tilka tea breakfast. It's honestly one of the best black teas to have without milk or sugar. I have had, and I am a tea snob. Every cup is smooth and not bitter. It's my go-to for do not talk to me. I'm drinking tea, teas. So <laughs> this is, uh, and then I've tried, this is from Tali. I've tried all different black teas and the Tilka breakfast is the best. Every time I have guests who drink it, I give them this and they love it. Laura says, I love starting my day off with this tea. A little pampering never hurt anyone, of course. So this, yeah, the Tilka is be absolutely beautiful and I highly recommend that one. And what are the other two that you've got there? So I have the Lemonata Rosa. So this is actually a herbal blend and it features lemon myrtle, which is grown up in the Whitsundays. So it, it's fresh, fresh, fresh as anything. And we blend it with some lemongrass, some rose and some hibiscus. And the hibiscus gives it that gorgeous pink hue. So it has this kind of theatrics to it that's just gorgeous. Uh, and the rose Moscato, which you mentioned, I think, before. So that is a handcrafted green tea and we blend that with some shisanda berries. Shisanda berries are great for uh, balancing. They are adaptogenic. So if you're feeling stressed, they will relax you. If you're feeling a bit sleepy, it'll perk you up. So, And it also has some rose and hibiscus in it as well. So that's just a really gorgeous one too. Oh, absolutely beautiful. So you are you're, you've taken your love of tea into a flourishing business and your business has had to work around your life mm -hmm. as a mother, as a wife, and, and yet your business has still continued to flourish. Mm -hmm. If you had to give uh, one piece of advice to the mm -hmm. folks watching this who are either going through the tough mudder exercise, which is small business right now, and there's a whole bunch of pressure and they're coming out of COVID and they're just not sure where things are going. They're still discombobulated. Uh, mm. Or people who are planning on starting a business and thinking, can you really make your hobby, your joy, your love, can you actually bring that into a business arena and be successful? If you had to give one piece of advice uh, to both of those groups of people, which I know that's a bit tricky for you, what would you say? Absolutely. You have to take some time at the start of your day for yourself. This is, this is your lifeline. You need to take some time away from other people, away from family, away from the noise, and you need that dedicated half hour time for yourself to clear your head, to clear your space and set you up because that is the thing when you do on a consistent basis, you will have the strength to get through those hard times and, and, and my life is a testimony to this. I cannot say this strongly enough. If you are exhausted, if you are overwhelmed, if you don't know how you're going to do things, you need to take that time at the start of each day for yourself and just sit and just relax and enjoy, of course, a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> so do you have any any mantras is are you are like are you spiritual like what do you do when you're actually just sitting there because I know a lot of people a lot of my audience are spiritual and in varying degrees some people are not um, but if, if you if you're not spiritual like how do you balance that what do you say to yourself what what kind of things do you practice in the morning is it just you know rise and shine sunshine like what, what does that look like for you <laughs> sure so yeah I'm I'm absolutely spiritual and I that is a huge part of my morning time where I will spend just time in reflection and in prayer 
and uh, talking to God. So that plays a big part for me. For someone who doesn't necessarily connect with that, it's a time for reflection. It's a time just to sit and I think actually overthinking can make that time a bit too difficult to um, to give that impact. And I sometimes I actually sit out there and I focus on what my senses are feeling. For example, uh, the breeze, I can feel that, the smells that are around, the sounds, and focusing on what my senses are experiencing. And that really just rests my mind and my thoughts. And that is very effective as well, just by setting the mood for the rest of the day. Mm, beautiful. So good. Well, I know that people are absolutely chomping at the bit to get their hands on this Tilka Tea award-winning, Australia's most award-winning organic tea brand. So uh, how do they find you? Where are you at? Uh, and what sizes do your teas actually come in? Sure. So the best place to buy is online, uh, tilka.com. And we have loose leaf. We have the tea bags, which we um, make ourselves. And they come in in the tin size. And then we also have a little Ziploc pouch, uh, which is just this little small one that just has the 10 tea bags in it. So if you just want to try it, uh, that's a good way to go. We also have a sampler box, which is actually a fantastic way to just to try the range. And that includes seven of our best selling teas. So that's a really good place to start. Absolutely. And do you have any more flavors rolling around in your brain during your morning time? <laughs> yes, I. Uh, the jade mist is my next go to. So that's when I start my work. That is just a straight single origin green tea. And I have that because it has the theanine in it, which helps me be alert and happy. It increases dopamine in your brain. So <laughs> wow. you work and be really effective just in that that first part of the day. So wow. Well, I'm certainly going to be a customer for your Jade Mist because <laughs> I am mad about green tea. I love the rose. I actually love the lemon myrtle as well. I kind of just love it all. So, but Jade Mist, I'll be in touch with you for that one. Uh, well, thank you so much for being on our podcast today. We'll get Rebecca on in uh, a few months' time when she's launched the Jade Mist and see where where she's at with her business, any more tips, tricks, and morning revelations she might have for our audience. Uh, if you are a business owner or a community leader and you would like to come on the podcast and show your story, tell your story, and invite people into your sphere of influence, we'd love to have you on the podcast. So reach out to us. I uh, look forward to chatting with you soon. Have a great rest of your day. Remember, you're awesome. Chat soon and God bless. Have you got a great business or community initiative you'd like to share with our podcast audience? We'd love to hear from you. Reach out to us today at fairbusinessaustralia.com.au.